Hi. I'm going to solve two examples of Newton's law problems. Um, one involving a truck that has a bowling ball that's hanging from a, um, a rope. And it nor normally would hang just straight down from the rope. But um, because the truck is accelerating forward, the rope gets deflected a little bit because it needs a force to, to push it in the X direction. And the only way it can do that is if the, if the rope deflects a little bit. So assuming that this truck has constant acceleration, what will be the, um, what will be the acceleration of the truck if the angle of deflection is theta? Okay, I'm going to show you how to solve that. And then the next one... Um, back to the truck. This time we have a, a crate in the truck and the crate is got a mass m and the coefficient of kinetic friction and static friction between the floor, the bed of the truck and the crate of the truck is are these. Are these. Those are known. And what we want to know is what's the maximum acceleration of this truck in which the box does not slide. In other words, if you went a if you accelerated a little more, the box would begin to slide um, on, in the back of the truck. Okay, so what we want to do is find out what's the max maximum acceleration you can have. All right, so let's go back to this one then first. And um, so we got our, our bowling ball that's being deflected. And I'm going to solve both these problems the same way. Actually, I, I'm going to solve every single Newton's second law problem the same way. And that is that you draw a free body diagram of the object in question. This, In this case, it's going to be the bowling ball. And we're going to assume the bowling ball has the same acceleration as the truck. Because they won't be move once it gets in this position, it won't be moving relative to the truck, so they must have the same acceleration. Um, so I'm going to solve this by drawing a free body diagram, and then um, breaking it into x and y component, the forces into x and y components, and then apply Newton's second law in both the x and y direction. So that's how I'm going to solve both of these. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We're going to take the, we're going to just make a free body diagram right now. So I'm going to. Um, Try and redraw this. So I'll make the bowling ball just a dot. And there's the rope, and here's the angle theta that it makes with the um, vertical. Okay, so here we are. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, draw the forces on this. So see if you know how many forces are on this and go ahead and draw the free body diagram. That's the, probably the toughest part of a Newton's second law problem. Okay, so the forces that are on this are going to be the um, force of gravity, mg, and the force of tension. And the force of tension is um, along the rope. Ropes only pull and they pull in the direction the rope is oriented. So it's going to be, I'm going to call it a T, but you might call it F sub T, depending on what your teacher, um, what your teacher uses for tension. Okay, so those are the only two forces on, the, on that bowling ball. Okay, let's put a coordinate system in there. So here's the um, Y direction, and here's the X direction. And my origin is at the, is at the object center of mass. And now I'm going to um, break the T, the tension force, into an X and Y component because um, there, it's right now not in the X or the Y. So um, that those two components might look like this. This and this. You might think that it's here. Either one is fine. So I'm going to call this T sub X and T sub Y. Okay. Now, um, if you look, um, let, me, let me bring this vertical all the way down to this axis. This is a right angle. So if that's a right angle, if that's theta, this is 90 minus theta. So this right here has to be theta again. So that's theta again. Or you could look at it as these are parallel lines. If I, drew, if I extended this force line, this t in the y direction up. So that's going to be um, this way, and this is since those are parallel, that would be alternate interior angles. In any case, that's theta. Okay. So um, because this is the adjacent side, this ty is equal to t cosine of theta, where the t is the whole tension. 
And this Tx, since it's the opposite side, is T sine of theta. All right. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's um, let's look at Newton's second law in the x and the y directions. Okay, so in the x direction, a in the x direction is equal to the net force in the x direction all over the mass. And a in the y direction is equal to the net force in the y direction all over the mass. Okay. So A in the X direction, um, there's only one force that's in the X direction, that's TX. So um, I'm going to say that A in the X direction is equal to TX, but TX is T sine theta. So I'm going to say T sine of theta all over the mass. Okay, now T is not a known. That's an unknown. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, um, this Y direction to get T. Notice that I'm solving these in parallel fashion, and that's just a good thing to do because um, in, a, in, in a, Newton's second law problems, a lot of times you use what you, what you get from the y, you use it in the x and vice versa. That's a very common thing. And so um, it turns out that this bowling ball is only accelerating that way. It's not accelerating in the y direction at all. But, so because this is zero, the a in the y direction is zero, the net force in the y direction must be zero. So that means that ty, t cosine of theta, is equal to mg. In other words, this force has to be equal to that force since there's no acceleration in the y direction. Solving for t, I'll solve for t and put it into here. t is equal to mg over cosine of theta. And so um, I'm going to take this equation then, and I'm going to put it into there. So here it goes. The acceleration, the acceleration is equal to um, t, but that's um, mg over cosine of theta. Um, times the sine of theta, all over m. So those m's cancel out, and I'm left with that a is equal to um, g times, now sine over cosine is tangent of theta. Apparently, it doesn't depend on the mass of the bowling ball. And um, let's see, when theta is zero, in other words, it's the thing is just hanging straight down, then um, the tangent of theta, ten, tangent of zero is zero, so zero times g is zero. So yeah, when it's if you see something just hanging straight down, there's then there must not be there must be no acceleration of the vehicle. Okay, um, this also the tangent of ninety degrees, like if the string is completely to the like doesn't have any y component, it just is that way. Then let's see, the tangent of 90 degrees is infinity, so infinity times g is infinity. So yeah, you'd have an infinite acceleration. In other words, it can't happen that, that it will be straight across. You always need to have a little bit of um, the tension in the y direction to support the weight. So if the, if the string is straight across, what's supporting the weight? So um, kind of an interesting an interesting problem. If you are in a vehicle and you want to know its acceleration, just take like a button or something and hang it from a string and then um, hold it vertically. And then when you zip forward, if you can get that angle that it, that it makes with the vertical, that g times that, the tangent of that angle gives you the acceleration. All right. Okay, let's do the next problem now. Next problem is we're in a we're in a truck. Truck driver is driving along, and uh, there, there's this crate is just resting on the. It's well, it's, oops, sorry. It's not just resting, but it's in the back of the truck, and it's not sliding. And the truck driver wants to know what's the maximum acceleration that he can give to the truck, and not have the box slide. Okay. All right. So. Um, Let's go ahead and, and solve for this. Okay, drawing the free body diagram of the of the 
crate. Go ahead and see if you can draw it. See if you know what the forces are on it. Okay, so uh, it's going to be, you got mg downward, and then you got this normal force up. I'll call that Fn for normal force. And then, um, then there's only one more force, and that's the force of friction, and it's actually this way. It's the force of static friction, and it's actually to the right. Okay, so let me see if I can explain that. Um, the floor of the truck is rough, and so if, my, if this hand is the floor of the truck, and these are the nooks and crannies that make it rough, if you don't get this next little bit, no, no worries, but I'm just going to try and explain why this force is to the right. So if this is the floor of the truck, and then you put the box on the floor, and the box itself is rough and has these nooks and crannies, then it gets engaged in there. So watch what happens when the truck tries to go that way. Watch what happens. It goes that way, and you see how it puts a force on the box that way? Here's the box. Here's the, tr here's the truck, the floor of the truck. And so when the truck lurches that way. See how it puts a force on the box that way? That's a force of static friction. Now you might say, wait, why is it static? I thought you said the box is going to be moving, accelerating. Well, it's static because um, it's not moving relative to the floor of the truck. When the two surfaces are not in motion relative to each other, then you use static friction. Now if the box were sliding across the floor, then you'd have to use kinetic friction. Okay, let's go ahead and put um, a coordinate system on here. And uh, we don't have to break this into X and Y directions because they're all in X and Y directions already. And um, we're going to apply Newton's second law in the X and Y direction. And so um, I'm going to say A in the X direction is equal to the net force in the X direction all over the mass. And A in the Y direction is equal to the net force in the y direction all over the mass. Okay, so um, A in the x direction, it's there's just this force of static friction. So I'm going to say A in the x direction is equal to the force of static friction all over the mass. And the A in the y direction is zero because it's not accelerating up or down. And so if AY is zero, then F net must be zero. That means that um, this force MG has to equal FN. Okay, so I'm just going to say FN is equal to MG. All right, so um, now the next, the next move I'm going to make is that um, A in the X direction, keep banging the camera here, is equal to the to the force of static friction. Now I'm going to say the force of static friction is equal to mu s times the normal force all over m. Now here's the thing about that. The force of static friction is less than or equal to the static force of friction uh, mu s times the mu s times the um, normal force. So why am I putting it in? Because it's not equal to, it's less than or equal to. But here's the thing, when this is maxed out, like the biggest this can get is when it's equal to this. And so that's why um, in this problem we're saying, what's the maximum acceleration? The maximum acceleration occurs when you have the maximum possible force, which is, so the F static max is actually equal to mu s times the normal force. Okay, so that's why I can just replace this with, with this equation, because it's the maximum acceleration. All right, so for the normal force, I'm going to take the mg and I'm going to put it in for that. And so ax is equal to mu s, and then this is going to be m times g all over, so that's the normal force, all over m. We'll cancel the m's. And um, so then there we have it. So the, the acceleration, the maximum acceleration the, the crate can, and the truck can have is going to be mu s times g. Notice the units work out because mu s is unitless and g is in meters per second squared. And so that's the maximum it can have. Now, um, when it starts to slide, if the box starts to slide, if you then um, what will happen is no longer will the 
crate and the truck have the same acceleration. They'll have two different accelerations. But the acceleration of the crate, once the crate starts to slide, the acceleration now, once it starts to slide, is going to be mu k times mg, or times g. And so, um, notice mu k is always a little less than mu s, and so, so um, it's got not going to have this as much of acceleration. Okay? All right, that's all I need to tell you today. Thanks. Bye.